I was born in Cuba. I arrived in New York in 1975. It's the creativity, the energy of New York. They say, oh, I have to live here. I went to the music school. From there, eventually, I went into doing fashion shows and uh, commercial work for magazines. And then, of course, I saw it because I was working at that time in the fashion business that a lot of the people in the gay community, they start getting sick about this illness that nobody knew. And uh, yes, it was a really very dark period, really. AIDS came out of nowhere. The first cases were described in 1981, and uh, there was a lot of fear, a lot of stigma, a lot of misunderstanding about the disease. Everyone with HIV died in a relatively short time, so people really did panic. When a person's exposed to the virus, it seeks out cells in the immune system, infects them, and kills them. When enough of those cells are killed, the immune system becomes compromised. At that point, they are susceptible to any of these microorganisms, and they can cause serious diseases. While Cornell was one of the first to be established, we set up a clinic for people with HIV infection side by side. We set up a research unit and quickly obtained NIH funding. We're one of the first units nationally to really begin exploring HIV research. Everything changed in the early 1990s, and that's when we had three drugs to use together. That made all the difference. So we suppressed HIV to the extent that resistance to the drugs couldn't emerge. But when you controlled the infection, the immune system came back. In 1998, I got the flu. I said, oh, wow, I never, felt, I never had such a terrible flu. But then I noticed that I was developing what it was a, like a thrust in my tongue, which became white. And I knew that that was a symptom. Asmani was one of the first people to walk into the unit and say, wow, you're doing research studies, and I have just found out I was infected. He already had T cells below the cutoff to qualify for AIDS, even though he had never taken treatment and never had a serious illness from it. He enrolled in one of our studies early on and had some of the great benefits that people with triple drug therapy have. In the beginning, it was like 20 pills a day. Now, I just take one. That's a miracle, really. <laughs> Mani had the benefits of all the progress that's been made. Not everyone was so lucky. Recent estimates are that the life expectancy of someone with HIV today, that they will live as long as someone without HIV. That's an enormously important move forward with HIV treatment. And you've been really stable from there. More recently, we've been involved with HIV prevention. One powerful tool that we focused on is called PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. An HIV uninfected person could take a pill or two and avoid the infection if they came into contact with HIV. I've been always interested, I guess, in, uh, in discovering something. I have a toy, I wanted to see how it worked. If I, somebody, I saw a sculpture, I wanted to see how it was made. If uh, they were the dress, how it was made, the dress. It's a discovery. I am very interested in the discovery, really. What are you, a gay artist? No, I am an artist that happened to be gay. Are you an artist with AIDS? No, I am an artist who happened to have AIDS. HIV doesn't affect me in my everyday life because I have managed to make it just a part of me.